so it, oh, I can record this. It's fine. But did you guys watch the the video that I did about the breaking the internet at all? So mm-hmm. did you catch? I just thought it was hilarious. So I had the like wine and cheese its. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you also catch that that same week? I don't know what brand of wine it is, but now they make a box wine that is half wine, half cheese its. What? I feel like we need sponsorship from this company. Yes. <laughs> I can prove to them that I recorded that video before prior to the product launch. Cause yeah. Jimmy Fallon had it on like that next Monday or Tuesday night. I was like, Oh my God, why did Jesus? I didn't know, did not know that was an actual thing. I didn't either. <laughs> Tell you. I didn't know that was a thing. It was just a thing for me. And so that night, especially, but yeah, so I'm going to be pursuing that as potential sponsorship. That's awesome. <laughs> so I like it. Hello. How are you ladies this evening? Very good. good. Yay. Um, this is the DVM Divas podcast episode number three. Very excited. <laughs> and today's hot topic. We are going to talk about, did we decide? Mm-hmm. maternity leave and Melissa breaking mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> for today's hot topic <laughs> we are going to talk about maternity leave and how our dear dear friend Melissa totally <laughs> broke the internet so <laughs> then we will have a uh I'll do a clinic or life hack we've got Melissa with a mom fail and Maria's got our big mom win for the day. So join us as we go beyond the stethoscope. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Play <them>. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this one's going to take a lot of editing. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Okay. I'm getting the hang of it now. So, yes. uh, so first off, um, I know it's one of our big things that we always talk about maybe not always, but it gets brought up a lot is maternity leave and kind of the veterinary profession. And I thought, um, we as moms could all really talk about it (laughs) and then we'll talk about how Melissa broke the internet. Somebody had to. (laughs) I'm glad you did. Yeah. Brought up a lot of good points. It did. Um, but I guess I will kind of start out and, um, my maternity leave, I think was maybe a little bit more like yours, Melissa. I'm just assuming, I know we've never really talked about it before, but when I went on maternity leave, I was a partner mm-hmm. in the practice. And so for me, um, I don't think I ever really went on leave. I didn't really have that time off just at home um, because there were two of us. Um, I did more business stuff than my partner. Um, I was still there. I think I delivered the first one I delivered on a Friday or Saturday and I was in the clinic the following Thursday. I'd already been answering phone calls all week. Um, and then I kept up the business stuff one day a week on the day a week, my partner had off, but, um, I got a lot of flack cause she and another vet took all the on call. So oh, when yeah. there's only two of you splitting it, that's what happens. Um, and then I think I only took four. So with three kids, I think I took four weeks, five weeks. And then the last one doesn't count because our partnership split and I was in a non-compete where I couldn't work. So <laughs> that was like the best maternity leave ever. Yeah. But no, so I don't know. What were your girls' experiences? Mine was so fairly. I, oh, sorry. Mine was fairly similar. Um, I did get uh, my first one. I was a, I was an associate. I was a true associate in a different clinic. So, but I think I was only going to take six weeks, and my daughter was born four weeks early, and I didn't have daycare, so I ended up taking about eight to ten weeks. Um, and I was only paid, I think for maybe two weeks of that. I can't remember. It wasn't much. Like I, we, I didn't get paid a whole lot for it. So, um, not enough to really factor in, I guess. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a fairly traditional six to eight week maternity leave. She was my first, my only one pretty smooth sailing, uh, the other two I was, we were, we had bought the practice by then. So, but we have, there's at the, at the beginning, there was four of us and now there's only three of us. But so my second one, there was four people. So I didn't have to 
my husband took a little bit of extra call to make up for the call that I wasn't taking, but the others in the practice really didn't. Um, and I only lived a block from the, literally lived like one and a half blocks from our clinic. Like it was, I could walk to and from. So I think I took, I don't even remember, six or eight weeks. It wasn't any more than eight weeks. I know that with either of my second two. And like you, I still did payroll. I still did business stuff. I mean, I would walk down the street with the stroller, pop in, do a few things, go home when it was time to feed the baby. Um, you know, I, so I, I definitely, I mean, I, I worked through it, but it wasn't like doing surgery and pulling calves and that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, you know, my perspective was, I, when I was gone, especially as a partner, that was less income and revenue that we could bring in. And so the longer I took off, the less calls I saw, the less money we made and that, that affected us. So, mm -hmm. and not just the money, it also affected, yeah, just the other doctors picking up the slack and having to see, and them having to work longer hours and, um, seeing more patients and, and that sort of thing. So my two maternity leaves were both different. I was in private practice. I was an associate. I, New Jersey actually has state disability for maternity. So you get four weeks off before mm. you're due. You get six ah. weeks off. If it was vaginal eight weeks off. If it was C-section and then you get an additional six weeks, um, as a family bonding experience. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, and that's paid and all paid at, it used to be paid at 60% of your salary, but they just raised it. And it used to be a cap of $600. And I don't know what they raised it to, but they actually raised the cap. So I did not want to take the full four, four weeks before because I felt bad that I was, I felt bad that I was leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't leaving. I was going out on maternity and I ended up having to take, I took three weeks um, because I was eight and a half, eight months pregnant or whatever. And I had a full schedule because it was the weekend of Memorial day mm. and both the other vets went fishing together <laughs> and I said, I'm done. Like, that's not like, it was like every 15 minutes I had an appointment. I did not get, I didn't have lunch. Like it was booked straight through. So I ended up taking three weeks before I took eight weeks after because I had a C-section mm -hmm. um, and it was eight weeks after your birth. So if you took four weeks before and you didn't go till two weeks late, you got six weeks before and it's still all paid. Wow. Um, yeah, it was great. And then if your employer doesn't allow you to take the extra six weeks bonding, they actually are fined by the state. So when I was finishing up my eight weeks, they called me and they were like, are you, are you going to immediately take your six weeks bonding? And I said, no, I'm splitting it out mm -hmm. because you have a full year to take it. And I split it out into two, three week sessions. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, if your employer says no, call us and we will find them. Wow. So wow. it was amazing. It was wonderful because like, yeah, I didn't make what I normally made, but we made enough that we can, yeah. we didn't, it didn't take a hit anywhere. Um, you know, they, obviously it was much worse for the people that work there that, you know, I was never by myself. There was always enough doctors there. So they would never had a single doctor day really. Um, so nobody had to work more. Um, but I got back and everyone told me I was on vacation for like four months and I was like, I wasn't on vacation, but thanks. Um, for my second time I went out, I was with corporate, um, and I got short-term disability and I got paid for eight weeks. And then I took up to 12 weeks off, um, which I'm happy because I mean, while I was on maternity leave, we were planning on moving. So it was like, but they were wonderful. They never gave me a hard time. And I took the time. Like I didn't go into the office. I didn't do anything, but I, I'm in a different situation where with me, I'm an associate <laughs> with you guys, you own the practice. So it's different, mm -hmm. but my employee employers never paid a cent. I'm the one that paid into all this disability mm -hmm. that I'm getting now getting back. Did they, so I think that is, 
sounds like since there were already enough doctors on staff, they didn't have to bring in relief vets to cover you. No, but they did hire, my other practice did hire another vet when I came back. So that way I could take my six weeks off. Mm -hmm. I mean, they needed it anyway. And he was giving me a hard time. He's like, well, I'm not going to give it to you. And I was like, well, I'm going to take it. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. These are, this is what I'm planning on doing. You tell me what weeks I can go. And he ended up hiring another vet, Mm -hmm. um, which he needed anyway. I mean, we were so busy. So we did, they always said that if they hire the relief for a day, the relief never makes enough money because they, clients don't want to see a relief Mm -hmm. doctor. Right. That's it. Like in a private practice and Mm -hmm. corporate, it's different because you always have different vets from different hospitals. Like we're, I go to other hospitals. That's how it is to help. So the clients aren't, are used to not always seeing the same person, you know? So it's, it was a completely different experience, but I'm happy. I, I still don't think the 12 weeks off with Jacob was enough. I still think that, you know, I do think, I think that somehow, and I don't think it should be employer paid. I think that somehow we should have maternity leave in the U S mm-hmm. whether it's a year protection of, of like our job, whether it's, um, you know, in, in other countries. And I don't know exactly what they do, but they have some countries have six months paid. Some countries have three months paid, but they all have like a year protection. If you need a year off with your kid, take it. Um, and I got that. I get that aspect from Steve's family. He's from Portugal and his cousin owns a business in Portugal. And she, when I was out there for our honeymoon, she was like, Oh, I have a pregnant associate who's going to go on leave soon. And it's like, I don't, it's a different mindset. They don't stress about things that we do. Cause it's not work, 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 work there. Right. It's more like what's for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, so it's I'm just different. Cur- I'm curious. Um, well, we've already kind of established, obviously, in a practice where there's only maybe two, maybe three doctors. And, and, you know, and I think this goes beyond just doctors, too. I think this goes to your support staff and your technicians mm-hmm. and things, too. I think, you know, that's actually, for me right now, I'm the only woman in the practice. So I don't necessarily have to worry about, well, one is, the other one's my husband, and he's hopefully not taking any paternity leaves that I'm not aware of. Um, <laughs> that would be bad. Um, and so, and I know the other ones beyond child, you know, bearing age, although he's got grandbabies now that he's had, he's helping his daughters with, but you know, for us, it's going to be technicians and mm-hmm. support staff that are engaged, getting married. They're, they're definitely at that age. And, and we've seen this before, you know, <laughs> just even in, um, we just had this conversation, not about maternity leave, about the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, everybody wants that day off everybody. And, you know, and all of our, we, we have one tech who's kind of the senior tech. She's been there a couple of years longer than the others. Um, but the others have all been there a few years. So it's not like we have a, an established pecking order per se. Um, and everybody wants the day off and we can't give everybody the day off. And how do you do that? And last year only we had one support staff to, to work for, to cover two doctors and boarding dogs. And, and it's a super busy boarding day. And I didn't, I think I had a high school kennel person that I brought in to kind of assist. It was nuts. It was crazy. It sucked. It, and that was just one day that we were floundering. And so I'm kind of trying to think ahead to what are we going to do if two of my texts get pregnant and they're both, cause they're both getting married at the, about the same time. So they may definitely start having children close to the same time. And, and just how do I manage that? It's not even necessarily about the pay, but just them being gone. You know, and then we have the, you know, our third, our two others that are going to have to cover all of their work. Do I schedule less appointments so that they're not as overworked? Do I really hire somebody for two months? And then, because they're going to come back, they're going to want their jobs back. So I, do I, can I hire somebody for two months? I live in a very small town in a very rural area. I don't have temp agencies. I don't have, 
a big pool to choose from. And so I'm just wondering if other clinics, if you know what that is, how they handle that, you know, even if it's, even if the government paid for their salaries and I didn't have the onus of having to pay their salary, how do I physically handle their absence and keeping my business going to where my patients and my clients aren't feeling that? Right. And I, I, I have to say, I think that, I'm oh, sorry. So, no, you're I good, think that technicians are like, because they're the back. I really feel that the technicians are the backbone of the practice. Like definitely they do everything. They make my job easier, not easy, but easier. Like I don't have to do a lot of stuff. And I feel like when the tech goes out, it's honest in my, and I'm not a practice owner. <laughs> it, I feel like sometimes it's a harder hit than when a doctor mm-hmm. goes out because the yeah. doctor going out, you can take a relief bed in when it, you don't have relief techs. There aren't relief techs. I, I don't know any of them. And I think that's even a harder question. And what we did is when we, when our tech went out in the private practice, you know, either I was okay with, and this is me personally, this is not going to be every doctor. I was okay with being short of tech that any day that I worked, as long as she was able to spend the time with her kid. And, but that's how I, that's how I think, you know, and not everyone is like that. So I was willing to take on more burden for her. Um, but again, not everyone's going to do that. And it's just, do you hire somebody? And now you just have maybe like a part-time person that comes in, like, what do you do? And I understand that aspect of an owner, you know, but I don't know the answer. Yeah. I think you can definitely ask for it. You know, I think when you hire, you can definitely say like, this is a temporary gig. We've got somebody leaving but I don't know if they'll take it or not. You know what I mean? You can always ask for what you want, but if you have no one apply. Yeah. You could do temp to, to, um, temp to permanent. Yeah. I mean, I took a job like that before temp to permanent in a pharmaceutical company. I was a temp for like eight months and then I became a permanent position, you know, knowing I wasn't, when I took the job, I didn't think I was going to be there forever. It was just, I needed a job. Right. Well, yeah. I know from being in a small town too, like your applicant pool is not <laughs> Do you I hear mean, me quite laughing? honestly? Yes. <laughs> you know, or you're like, oh, I know so-and-so. They're really nice. And then your OM is like, and by the way, they were picked up last week for Bronx. Mm-hmm. And you're like, crap. Like, I thought that mm-hmm. was a good kid. I thought this could work. Yeah. No, no, it won't. <laughs> yeah. So I get it. I, I don't know. It's interesting being in the, like I'm, not that far away from where I practiced before, but we're larger. Um, And we do have relief techs here, which I had no idea. Um, But they just do small animal and they just fill in. And it was kind of bananas. Some will do months at a time. Some just pick up shifts here and there. But it was interesting. I was like, holy cow, relief techs. That's a thing. Or locum techs. I don't know what you call them. I mean, honestly, a a locum tech you can ask for a decent amount of money because this is, you're covering shifts. I mean, we're not now, I have to say now we're fully staffed, but like a couple months ago, we were always looking for technicians. I would have one tech and, or I walked in and had 35 appointments and I had two techs. I was like, what do you think I am? Like, are you kidding me? Like, that's ridiculous. So a locum tech is actually a decent gig. Yeah. So then what just, going on what your guys's experiences have been, whether it's, whether it's been maternity leave or extended leave for any reason, you know, a key member of the team needs time away, you know, for, for, mm-hmm. for any reason whatsoever. And, you know, I, my heart definitely will recognize that person needs that time. There's something significant happening in their life. I know it. I feel it. I fully understand they need that time. Uh, My other team members fully recognize and understand they need that time. But it's, even though you know it, it's still, you may not want to verbalize it, but it's a strain. You know, it does. I mean, you might know that you're doing it for the right reasons and you, and you know, in your head that when it's your turn, they're going to have your back, but there's no way to deny that it puts an immense stress on the rest of the practice. And, and 
you know, and I don't, I don't say that intending to put guilt on anybody. I don't say that to try and, you know, bring us down as a gender or anything to that nature. It's just the reality of it. I mean, we all experience it. And so, you know, I, and I think there's just something to be said for recognizing that and appreciating that the others, they may never verbalize it. They may never say that, that it sucked, but they experienced the suckiness of it. And, and I just, that's, I think where a lot of everything else that happened. Um, and, and admittedly, I didn't word it very, um, tactfully, uh, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but I, I just, think tried. I did. Okay. I did. I, I, come across, I, all right. I, I, Melissa, can yes. I tell you something? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it wasn't the best worded situation, <laughs> but it wasn't awful. Yeah. And on top of that, I may not have the same views as you, but right. look at the conversation we're having. Right. <laughs> what you saw, it's completely different. People uh, went, like, they were just vicious. And you weren't saying that you should have never had maternity leave. Yeah. But no. it is history. And I think that everybody really needs to recognize that, yes, I believe that we should have maternity leave. I believe that it should be paid. Mm-hmm. by the government, mm-hmm. not the employer. I do believe that we should have protection for a year just in case we want it. And that's okay if we want it. But and, we it's okay. have to- and it's okay if you don't want it too. I know. There's nothing wrong with that. If you yeah. like, I'm going back to work tomorrow. You're not a horrible mother if no. you don't want to spend 12 weeks at home with your baby. Like that's, no, that's perfectly normal it. too. <laughs> But I think we all need to realize that there is strain on the entire practice between the clients, the technicians. Look, you're not going to be able to schedule the technicians 40 hours a week, maybe. You know, they're going to lose money. There is a strain on the practice. And, you know, that's what the practice has to deal with. Yes. But practice owners are going to be vocal about it. And they have every right to be just like the associates have every right to be vocal that they want paid maternity leave. Well, and I think also, you know, I think something that we're starting to maybe slowly see as practice owners, as practice managers, um, is maybe having a little bit more understanding of what a healthy schedule is and what a realistic schedule looks like. And, you know, and I think we have to not give our clients all of the control in the schedule. And I personally think there is zero thing, nothing wrong with telling a client, I can't get your dog in today because we're not fully staffed or, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to really go into all the details. We don't really owe it to them that much, but you know, how about we recognize as those of us who are in charge of how things get scheduled of being cognizant and respectful of the workload that we're all carrying. And perhaps during those weeks or months when we are down numbers on our team, that we just say, you know what, we're going to cut back 10 to 15% on our caseload. We're not going to see every vaccination. Maybe we don't take in new patients during this time frame. You know, I think there has to be some sort of dialogue that's happening in that sense too. I mean, because we're all burnt out for one reason or another, whether, I mean, something is getting us down and overworking us. And whether it's somebody has to be gone for chemo, somebody has a baby, somebody's parent dies, somebody who knows what are their own mental health. They need to take a step back. You know, we need to have some strategies in place to accommodate that, not just monetarily, you know, and yes, except that you may have a slight decrease in revenue. You know, if you cannot bring in a relief veterinarian for whatever reason, maybe you, you just schedule a little bit differently during that time frame. Mm-hmm. I had, so when I took my job in Colorado, I worked in a position, I was there for six weeks and I ended up going into corporate right like at, at that six week mark. During my interview process, the recruiter, I called the recruiter and I said, 
I just found out I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I don't care. She goes, the first day you get there, you know, let them know. I said, okay. I waited the first day because I was like so overwhelmed with everything. The second day I went up to, um, he, it was my practice manager, but my manager was like 1,500 miles away from me. But I went up to him. I said, I just want to let you know I'm like nine weeks pregnant. And he goes, congratulations. He goes, you know what? I don't care because I want you for the long term. I'm not looking to keep you for a year. And I think that sometimes the way that he looked at it, it made me realize that sometimes we need to look at it. Like we might be down for, with, you know, staff and stuff for a couple of weeks, couple of months. It may even be a year, depending on complications to everything. My neighbors had a baby in January and she's not going to go back until March probably of next year because of complications. So like, I don't know how long, but we want this to be a long-term thing. We want you to stay here for a long time. We want to build you here and build the foundation here. And so I feel like that sometimes when owners, you know, try to take on too much, take on too much, take on too much, when they do have an associate out, they need to realize that this associate's going to be here for a long time. And if you respect what they need now, you might have them for 10, 20 years down the road. And they're the ones that are going to be making you money also. Yeah, right. for sure. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. um, 